In this episode of Leyenka Speaks, I am going to bring the topic of toxic positivity. Now, I'm bringing this topic to the podcast because I've heard some really interesting things about what people think about the work that I do. So being a self-transformation coach, people seem to think that I'm all about only positive vibes, only good vibes. Don't bring that negative energy here, sis. And I've never said that. So I'm here to debunk the myths around positive thoughts and how we have actually entered into a realm of toxic positivity. So let's first define it. What is toxic positivity? Because we know that it is good to have a positive mindset. It is good to think good thoughts. It is good to have gratitude and to be grateful and all of that good, good stuff. Yes, that is all well and good. But here is the thing, life comes with things that don't feel good. Life comes with trials and hardship and pain and hurt and sadness and anguish and all of those emotions that come up when things aren't going well. And what we tend to do, or what some of us tend to do when things aren't going well, is to push on and put a positive band-aid or plaster over something that isn't great because especially from the faith Islamic perspective that is the way you are pious or you are grateful to Allah to God meaning we tell ourselves that if we allow ourselves to feel pain if we allow ourselves to acknowledge the fact that we are feeling pain that that means we are in some way questioning the decree of our creator How so? How so? When did we come up with that? The idea of being perpetually positive, always positive, is actually a way that we dismiss the reality of our situation. So when you say that there's no room for negativity here, when you are going through a tough time, How do you allow yourself to turn in supplication to the Lord of the world when you don't acknowledge that you're going through something tough? We enter into a place of denial. We enter into a place where we're not acknowledging what we're going through that then holds us back, stops us from asking our creator, our Lord, to help us, to support us and to bring us aid. Toxic positivity is where you decide to have a positive mindset and put an air of positivity no matter what is going on. No matter how hard things are, you decide that it can only be a positive view mindset that you have no matter what life brings, no matter what comes your way, no matter what happens. So it's a perpetual state of positivity regardless of what is occurring in your life. Mm. Now it does sound like a good idea when you think about it. However, when you can't hold space for your challenges, when you can't hold space for your negative emotions, when you can't hold space for the reality when things aren't going great, that stops you and holds you back from being able to hold space for other people. And that's where we hear phrases like, It could be worse, sis. Don't you know the people over there in that part of the world are going through worse? You have got so much to be grateful for. What are you complaining about? This dismissal, this dismissal of the reality of someone's situation is not helpful. It causes others to feel unseen it causes them to feel guilty and shameful for f- for acknowledging what they're going through. And it leads them into a place of shame. What shame is there in saying that something hard is going on for me right now? What shame is there in us saying that I'm struggling with something right now? What shame is there in us saying that things are tough and challenging for me right now. There is none. But in some how, some way, we have convinced ourselves that we have to be positive. 
that there's no room for negativity, that mentioning that you're going through a challenging time means that you are complaining about the Lord of the world and you are displeased with him and his decree and in some way you are questioning his choices for you. Hmm. The problem with toxic positivity is that it stops us from being able to hold space, but it also denies and dismisses the reality of the human emotional experiences. If anything, it thwarts our ability to have a full, to have a full human emotional experience because when we're saying that we can't hold space for negativity no negative vibes here sis we are saying that that part of the human experience which is a reality of the duality that exists in this world that part isn't welcome here did god get it wrong when he decided that there would be duality in this world did he get it wrong Or did he give it to us as an opportunity that we can use? Maybe to see how much resilience that we have, how much greatness we possess, and also as a way for us to turn to him in our needy state. Because sis, if you are denying what you're going through, how are you turning to the Lord of the worlds to help you through? Now let's just turn to... A very clear example we have of the reality of acknowledging what we are going through. In the Quran, we have the story of Prophet Ayyub, Job. And we know his story. He was tested and tested and tested again and tested again. With his wealth, with his family, with his health, he was tested and you know the very first thing that he said when he turned to Allah in supplication in and amongst all of this what did he say it wasn't good vibes only it wasn't oh no God my Lord things are great out here no 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 he didn't do that what he said he turned in supplication to Allah and he said and he proclaimed that hardship has befallen me, harm has befallen me. Right there in that space, he was acknowledging that he was feeling something and it was hard. He was acknowledging the truth and the reality of his situation. He didn't say all praise is due to you, Allah, for all the trials that you have given me. No, 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 no. He came forth and he said, harm and hardship has befallen befallen me this is hard I'm struggling he made it known to himself and to his lord that he was in need that he was struggling that it was hard that he was going through tough times now this admission right here is a beautiful example of humanity and the permission that we have to be able to acknowledge what we're going through And we have examples upon examples upon examples from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who went through hard times. He showed us the spectrum of human emotion through his experiences, through his highs, through his lows, and everything in between. This gives us insight and knowledge of how we too can approach our trials, can approach our struggles, can approach our lows and our pains, we can see that actually acknowledging what we're going through is fine. It's not shameful. It's not sinful. Turning to ourselves and being able to say this is hard and using that to be able to decide our next step is a beautiful thing. When you allow yourself to acknowledge what you're going through, it opens you up to be able to turn to Allah in supplication and to say, this is hard, please support me. I can't bear this. Please handle this burden. Please carry this weight. But when you are positive vibing it, when you are putting a positive spin on it, you miss out on that opportunity. 
You rob yourself of that opportunity of being able to utilize that trial, that emotion, that situation to your next step, whatever that next step is, but to your next step. This is incredibly vital. And it's incredibly vital because toxic positivity stunts our emotional growth. It stunts our emotional intelligence and it stunts our emotional maturity. It moves us into a place of denial where we're denying, we're minimizing, we're dismissing, we're even invalidating ourselves and what we're feeling. And if we're doing that to ourselves, then we know that we're definitely doing that to others and denying ourselves and rubbing ourselves of the richness, the richness and the opportunity and the beauty and the fullness of the human experience, the human emotional experience and all that it has to offer in the highs and in the lows and in everything in between. Now, I know that we hold ourselves back from wanting to feel our, you know, negative emotions because we tell ourselves the story that if I feel and if I allow myself to feel, then I'm going to spiral into a place that I can't get out of. I'm going to spiral into a place where it's going to be all encompassing. It's going to be too much. It's going to be overwhelming. And frankly, don't have time for that. Right. That's the story we tell ourselves. But I would love for you to get curious and to ask yourselves, is that really true? How true is it really? Or is it true that you do have the capacity to feel and acknowledge? That you do have the capacity to move through the feelings to the other side of them? That you do have the capacity to use that feeling that doesn't feel great as fuel for something that would be useful and beneficial. When you acknowledge what you're feeling, that negative emotion, instead of toxic positivitying it, when you allow yourself to acknowledge it, you allow it to be seen. And when you allow it to be seen, you allow yourself to be seen. And you give yourself permission to feel, to acknowledge and to be seen. And then you can rise and allow yourself to ask yourself in that moment, what do I need? What do I need right now? And how can I give it to myself? What do I want and what do I need right now in this moment of sadness? Maybe I need a nap. Okay. What do I need right now in this moment of fatigue? Maybe I need to just have some good, good chamomile tea. What do I need right now in this moment of hardship? Maybe I need to hear a comforting voice. Okay, I'm going to call a friend. What do I need right now in this place where things are feeling heavy? Maybe I need some air. Okay, I'm going to go for a walk. So can you see that in allowing ourselves to feel the feelings, being comfortable with the discomfort of feeling the feelings, acknowledging the feelings, we allow the feeling to be seen and then we can move into a place of being proactive with that feeling. So it's not a case of dismissing it, it's not a case of getting rid of it, but it's a case of using it as fuel, using that feeling, that emotion as fuel for the next step. And you know, that next logical step for you could be going to have a nap. It could be that. It doesn't have to be something really active and energized. It could be a slowing down. It could be a lying down. It could be a closing your eyes, taking some deep breaths. It could be switching off that internal chatter and placing a hand on your chest and just taking some good belly filling deep breaths so that we're no longer invalidating what we're feeling. We're no longer dismissing the reality of what we're feeling. We're allowing ourselves that human experience of feeling those hard emotions so that we can move forward as wholesome, more wholesome, whole human beings and have a more full, wholesome human experience. I do want to touch on 
gratitude because I know I mentioned it at the beginning of this episode and so you might be thinking well Liyanka uh hmm, where does gratitude fit into this equation here where you're telling us to feel our feelings and those feelings don't feel too great (laughs) right gratitude is a beautiful tool and it's one that yes we want to have an attitude of gratitude does having an attitude of gratitude mean that we can't feel our feelings too Hmm, no, it's about when we actually feel gratitude. So instead of doing what we do, where hardship has befallen us and we say, Alhamdulillah, and all praise is due to God and it could be worse, so-and-so is suffering out there. And then repressing or suppressing that emotion that has come up for us, what about if we can acknowledge just as prophet ayub did that this right here feels hard i'm i'm hurting with this and moving through that feeling allowing yourself to feel that and acknowledge it and then moving into the space of gratitude so do we feel gratitude right at the point of feeling the emotion and band-aid it with gratitude or do we feel it on the other side of acknowledgement, that part. Once you've acknowledged that painful emotion, after the process of surrendering to the emotion in terms of acknowledging and feeling it, then gratitude can come forth. It's a beautiful combination of showing ourselves that we can have both, that we can feel those hard feelings and still be grateful to the Lord of the world for all that he has given us. That we can say this is hard and I'm still grateful that I'm here to call out to you, Lord. That we can say this is hurting, that person hurt me and I am grateful that this harm, this hurt wasn't any worse than this. The two can, can coexist. However, when we use gratitude to band-aid any negativity, then we are again denying ourselves. And what I invite you to is to welcome in a fuller human emotional experience so that you can live more from a place of fullness rather than from a diminished, restrictive, constricted place.